So recently I was contacted by a company named Pling and they asked me if I'd like to make a video about butterflies. And I said, sure, I love butterflies. So they sent me some information and a butterfly habitat so I can take some caterpillars and watch them grow. And that's what we're gonna be doing in today's episode. Now, the only downside is the company themselves, they don't sell the caterpillars, so I have to provide them myself. However, I don't think that's gonna be a problem because behind me, I have a huge patch of nettles. And nettles are a great food source for many species of butterfly that you'll find in this country. The caterpillars we'll be looking at today are of the small tortoiseshell butterfly. They are one of the most common butterflies in the British Isles and can be found anywhere from gardens and cities to mountain tops. The female will lay batches of eggs on new growth nettles, typically in full sun. There can be as many as 80 eggs in a batch which are laid on the underside of a nettle leaf. The young caterpillars will emerge from the eggs after one to three weeks depending on the weather. And you may be able to see just behind me here, there is some evidence of caterpillars right here. This kind of webbing that's and this stripped nettle is evidence that caterpillars have been living there and feeding there. Let's take a closer look. When the young caterpillars emerge from the eggs, they will build a communal web on top of the nettle. This web serves to protect them as they feed. Once the nettle has been stripped by the hungry caterpillars, they move on to a new stem and build new webs. Now I may have left it too long for these caterpillars. These have grown quite large and they've dispersed now. They've probably pupated somewhere, maybe even turned into butterflies by now. But that's not the only evidence caterpillars have got. Let's take a look somewhere else. In a nearby patch of young nettles, I found some more younger caterpillars. Here you can see another of their defensive strategies. You can see one older, larger caterpillar walking along the leaf. As it disturbs the smaller caterpillars, they jerk their bodies from side to side. When in a group, this could look quite intimidating to a predator. Okay, so we need to set up the butterfly habitat. Now one thing I really like about the one thing sent me is that although most of the sides are netting to allow really good airflow, it does have one side that is a clear plastic, which, which you can either use as the bottom to make it easier to clean when the caterpillars and the butterflies leave the mess, or what you can do is what I'm gonna do, is use it as a viewing window to get some good footage on the camera. So we need to put in some food for the caterpillars and they're going to eat nettles so I'm going to need to get some gloves and we'll try and get some nettles in there. Now one thing I've got to remember is that the nettles will dry out very quickly so we need to make sure that we keep them wet and moist because you're going to be cutting the stems and effectively killing the plants. So you need to refresh that food very frequently. Here I try to select a fresh looking stem and snip off the top. I'll give it a check for the wildlife already living on it and as it seems to be free of inhabitants, I'll take this for my butterfly habitat. Okay, so we have our leaves here, our nettle leaves. Now, in order to keep this alive and as fresh for as long as possible, we need to keep it watered. So I've got a little plastic container here. You can see this, just a little plastic container. It has a hole on the top there for the stem of the nettles to go through. We fill this up with water and that should keep this fresh just for a little bit longer. They probably won't last that long, so we need to make sure we give them fresh food pretty regularly, probably every day, but we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to get this set up inside the habitat and then we can go and find our caterpillars. So I'm sure this is going to be easier said than done, but I'm going to try and carefully knock off just a few of the caterpillars into this little dish so we can get them inside. Let's give it a go. Using a small paintbrush, I gently knock off around seven or eight caterpillars which will become the subjects of this video. The tricky part is getting them back onto the nettle in the habitat. I want to make sure they go onto a leaf and not drop down onto the floor of the habitat where they may wander off and not find their food source. So with some delicate manoeuvres, I manage it. At this stage they are very small and are quite difficult to spot, but it doesn't take long before they begin to strip the nettle of its leaves and they grow very rapidly. change the nettle stem every day and this is easier said than done. 
I need to first find all of the tiny caterpillars and remove them from the spent nettle stem, then gently place them back on a fresh stem. These next other clips are taken at intervals over the next few days and you can see how much bigger they have grown. On occasion they take a wander from the habitat, but they always find their way back to the nettle leaves. This is good as I'm not so worried when I change their nettle stem that they'll wander off and not be able to eat. Here's a great shot of the caterpillars eating. You can see how they chew the edge of the leaf. They are very methodical. You can also see how much they've eaten by looking at the mess they leave behind. This mass of black baubles is the caterpillar's droppings, known as frass. By day 11, a change had come over some of the caterpillars. Some of them have begun to wander around the habitat. They have now eaten enough and grown enough and are now looking for a place to pupate. The caterpillars will find their way to the top of the habitat and attach their tail ends to the netting at the top. Out in the garden this would be a leaf or a stem. Then they will hang down in a sort of J shape and begin the pupating process. This time lapse shows one caterpillar getting into position. You can see some of the others wandering around looking for their own spot. This corner must be good as three caterpillars have chosen it. They will hang down like this for several hours before any physical change is noticeable. But when they do pupate, the change is very quick. It can take as little as five minutes to happen. I didn't need the time lapse here so let's try and slow it down a bit. Now all the caterpillars have pupated. I don't need to feed them anymore and I just need to wait for them to emerge as butterflies. This stage can take between 2 to 4 weeks depending on temperature. We're having a bit of a heat wave at the moment so everything's happening pretty quickly and it only takes 9 days before the first butterfly emerges. A good sign that they are getting close to emerging is that the pupate will darken. Here you can see a good comparison between the golden metallic coloration of a newer chrysalis and two darker chrysalises that are near to emergence. Once the butterflies begin to emerge, it happens quicker than you might think. Here is an emergence in real time. The butterfly will now take several minutes to fully inflate its wings. Once this has happened, the butterfly will spend some time gently flapping its wings, getting its flight muscles warmed up and ready to take to the air.
You may see some red stains on the walls of the habitat. But don't worry, this isn't blood. This is called meconium, and this liquid is expelled from the intestine of the butterflies shortly after emerging. This is perfectly natural. Meconium is the leftover part of the caterpillar that was not needed to make the butterfly. It is possible to keep the butterflies in the habitat for a few days, feeding them sugar water or fruit juice, or even provide them with flowers. However, I'm going to release them as soon as possible. So now that all the butterflies have emerged from that chrysalis, they're, they're ready to go. I don't like keeping them too long because I don't like watching them fly around in the small habitat and not be able to, to get anywhere and, and to feed on pollen. Um, I may have mentioned this in the video already, but I did try to give them some sugar water um, soaked uh, in a, um, a paper towel. Uh, I, hope that I was hoping they were going to land on that and feed off the, the sugar water from that, but they didn't seem to be too interested. So there's, they're not eating anything in there at the moment. You can give them uh, fruit. Oranges are pretty good. I used that with the painted ladies a few years ago, and that was really good. Um, but I think the best thing to do is now, now that we've seen that entire life cycle, is to let them go and let them hopefully feed on some of the flowers in the garden, or more than likely, they'll just disappear off over the garden wall and uh, they'll find somewhere else to feed. So uh, let's, let's release them. Like that, they've gone. So if you want to get yourselves one of these habitats, I will leave a link in the description of where you can buy it. I just want to say thank you once again to Pling for sending me this and letting me use their product uh, to make this video. And also, just before we go, I'll show you something else that comes with the package. So with the butterfly habitat, you get the little information pack that tells you about how to look after butterflies and gives you a uh, like a, a chart where you can actually write down the dates when they emerge. Um, this is specifically about monarch butterflies and with that we also get a couple of little uh, little toy figures. Um, this is great for kids. It shows the life cycle of uh, monarch butterflies. It comes with a monarch, it has its caterpillar, it has a, a little leaf with some tiny caterpillars on and the chrysalis of a monarch as well. Uh, so these will go up on my shelf with, some, with the other ones I got from uh, the um, Painted Ladies a few years back and uh, nice little additions to my collection. Uh, but yeah, once again, the description for this will be down, um, so the, the link to be able to buy one of these will be in the description of this video. And I want to say thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Thank you.